Bonjour, mon petit pois. How is that for framing? Do we like this? Yes, I think this is nice. Um, hello, hello, welcome to a midweek video. I'm going to be talking about burnout in this video. Burnout is something that I wish I didn't know as much as I know about. It's something I have experienced multiple times, but also that I've developed some pretty good coping strategies and maybe even recovery strategies for. Um, I think burnout is on the rise or at least being open about it and talking about it is on the rise. Maybe it's the same level as it was, but now we're hearing about it more. Um, so I hope that this video is of some help for you if you're feeling that way, or if you know someone um, feeling burnt out, please consider sending them this video. Or if you don't want to send my video, that's okay, but maybe listen to it and then say some of the things, um, maybe it'll be helpful. So I suppose the first question is what is burnout? I did an extensive Google uh, research session last night where I googled what is burnout and it says here burnout is a state of physical and emotional exhaustion. It can occur when you experience long-term stress, for example working a stressful job. Common signs of burnout, feeling tired or drained most of the time, feeling helpless, trapped and or defeated. And it made me think, what was burnout like for me? So I have uh, written some notes. If I'm looking down, I'm, I'm looking at my little notes here. So for me, burnout is feeling more than tired. There's definitely times when your life is just a bit tiring or you're a bit stressed or, you know, you're a bit like, oh, what a week. But burnout is more than that. Um, it's waking up tired. It's one day off not touching the sides. You know, when you're like pretty frazzled, you think, you know what, I need a day off and that will write me it didn't it didn't write what wronged me um one week off not touching the sides um frazzled too many tabs open um spiraling lists like when i'm feeling burnt out it's like i can see every little thing that needs doing like i would like now i'm looking into my garden and i can see that our trees definitely need um trimming we have someone come and like trim them back at the moment i'm like yeah that needs doing at some point but when I'm in a burnout I'd look at that and be like oh God, I haven't done that I would really berate myself like wow can't even look after my garden properly like very very negative self-talk um catastrophizing potential experiences small things seem hard fun things seem overwhelming easy things seem exhausting just wanting to stop everything and not being able to identify what the stressor is so everything becomes the stressor if I thought it was, um, you know, okay, it's this particular friendship that's stressing me out, okay, I'm going to distance from that. Or if it was this particular work project is really just really toxic for me, okay, we'll scrap that. But when I'm feeling burnt out, like everything is too hard and everything becomes very, very oppressive and all my negative emotions feel heightened. So anxiety, dread, worry, sadness, everything just feels a lot more feely if that makes any sense if you've been watching me a long time though you will know that i am a pro at masking i'm really good at holding things together you know when you bump into a friend in the street and they say how are you i am the friend that will be like fine thank you really well thank you how are you i i could be like having the worst day of my life and i would say really well thank you how are you so convincing you would never imagine that I'm not really well I wish that I didn't always do that that's something to work on that's another topic that's another topic about people pleasing and like holding things in and pushing through um you can't you can't usually or eat well I can't push through burnout I'm not saying you can't I should just say I, I hope it's obvious I'm not a doctor <laughs> or uh, I'm not a professional in mental health issues I'm just kind of sharing what's happened to me and what has worked for me like friend to friend um so when has burnout happened for me I think the first time I really experienced a burnout but didn't know it was 2015 um I how was it was Christmas I remember distinctly it was the end of November and I remember exactly where I was in my room in my old bedroom with the fairy lights on my bed and I had my laptop on my lap and I rang my then manager Maddie crying and just said please take everything out of the calendar I can't do it I had at that point was 18 months into a marriage separation um 
I was a single mum. I was just finding uh, work, by the way, was really exciting and fun. Like, I don't know why I rang her and said, take all that stuff out. Well, I do, because I was burnt out. They, those were the things that made my life really good. Work in 2014 and 2015 were like the joy spots in my life. Obviously Darcy was as well, but like home life was hard. The daily grind felt hard, like single mum life felt hard, but work felt great. But I was so, I think I was just so worn down that I was like, I just can't do it, I can't face it. In the end, we had a chat and we took quite a bit out, but didn't take everything out. And it was all all right because literally like three weeks later, everyone went off on their holidays and all the things that I'd been finding hard kind of eased up like um I wasn't having to do the school runs and like school admin I remember at the beginning really struggling with school admin now I've acclimatized it but like I mean things like all the letters I send all the emails making sure you've got the right kit on the right day like that used to just really throw me after that life went on 2016 2017 yada yada and then 2020, we all remember what happened there. And I mentally just crashed, but I didn't want to make a fuss and I didn't want to admit it because I basically had imposter syndrome for my own mental health because I would look around and be like, there's people so much worse off than me. There's like nurses working 20 hour shifts, like dealing with like awful things. And there's families really struggling. I'm like, I would look at everybody else's problems and be like, well, they're so much bigger than mine. Like, how dare I feel like I'm struggling? I shouldn't say this to anybody because I'll look like... I felt like by saying, guys, I'm really struggling, I can't cope. I felt like by saying that, I was saying, uh, uh, like negating everybody else's problems. And again, being a people pleaser, like not wanting to make a fuss, holding things in. I just held it in and held it in. I remember once saying to someone, I don't know if I should go to the doctor because I'm really struggling with like heart pains. When it got really bad, I was having these like, my heart would race so fast, like I was at the top of a roller coaster about to go, but it would do it for such extended periods of time. Sometimes I'd like take my breath away a little bit. And I was like, I don't know if I should mention that to a doctor. My friend was like, yes, absolutely. And then I didn't because I didn't want to clog the phone lines up and I knew that doctors were stretched and there was more important things going on. So I didn't say anything about it. Um, then in 2021, um, things, remember, I was really good at keeping things going. So on the outside, I think it looked okay, but I was feeling, I was finding it harder and harder. And that's when I finally thought, I don't think I'm okay. And I remember the exact moment that that happened. So all the restrictions had eased and we were going to have a family day out, me, Liam and both the girls. And everybody was ready downstairs and I went upstairs, I'd got everything ready and I went upstairs and the final thing for me to do was just quickly put some clothes on and sort my face out. And I came into this room and I looked around and I just thought, I don't know what to wear, I can't work this out. And I went back into the bedroom and I just laid on the bed and started crying even though we all had to go out. And Liam came up and he was like, what's, what are you doing? And I was like, I can't, I, I, I can't, I've got, I can't work out what to wear. I, could, I found it even hard to say, I can't get dressed. And he was like, you've got so many clothes, what are you talking about? And it was as if like a simple day out, but the outfit felt like I had to pick an all terrain, incredible outfit that would be the right temperature, wouldn't itch me, would fit like, it, like I can't tell you how hard I found it that day to find an outfit and I just said I can't do it it's too overwhelming I can't go out like I can't even do this step let alone then sort my face out then get in the car and then go walking around like I just couldn't do it and that's when I something clicked in my brain I thought this isn't a mood choice I'm just not well this isn't me being a bit mopey or me feeling sorry for myself or me choosing to have a hard time I'm not well in this moment and I think I can't remember if I said it or I thought it but I, th I feel like I said to Liam I don't feel well I think I did say because he responded I, said, I must have said something like I don't feel well and Liam was like no I can see you're not well and having someone just validate like yes this isn't you just being hormonal or just being a Mardi bum or anything like that. Like, you're not well. And that was a real turning point. 
just FYI, I think I found leggings. <laughs> we did go out and have a nice day, but that's when I knew that I needed to do something about this. And I have a list of things that I did that helped and worked and hopefully if anyone's watching that feels in any way similar, maybe some of these will be useful to you as well. So first things first, I'm the realist, but first things first, tell people how you feel and tell people with not necessarily confidence because it can be really hard to confidently say like, oh hey, I feel really burnt out. Um, but tell people with, what's the word I've written here? Don't diminish it, I've written tell people, be firm, don't diminish it because people will mirror how you tell them. So if you say to someone, oh, oh it's, you'll laugh, oh, I'm so, I'm so ridiculous, this is so stupid, but I just feel a bit burnt out. Like, don't start off with that, like, don't negate it, don't diminish it. Say, hey, I have been really struggling lately and I am burnt out, or I think I'm feeling a bit burnt out, or I think I'm feeling burnt out. Um, but don't start it off, I do that a lot, I often start things off like, oh, I'm, I'm going to sound really stupid now. Like, even when I go to the doctors, which is very rare, I will say, sorry, sorry to bother you, <laughs> sorry to waste your time for the appointment that I've booked. Um, but tell people, because as soon as you tell people, one, there's a good potential that they're going to offer you support, but two, you're kind of making it real, and once you make it real, you can tackle it. The second biggest thing that I have done to help myself is time off. Now I appreciate that we can't take time off from everything. There might be some people that can, but most people either are employed by someone else and have to go to work or have children and have to, you know, keep them alive and get them to school and all those sorts of things. So look at your life and see what can you take time off from. It's very easy to just say down tools, take time off, but like what what's realistic? Could you go to your HR department at work or your boss and say, I'm not feeling well, can I have some leave? Or if you work for yourself, like I do, I was able to be like, right, I'm gonna down tools for a little while. Um, with childcare, do you have friends that you could say, look, on on like a Wednesday and Thursday, could you pick up the children and I'll do Monday and Tuesday and then at least you've like alleviated two days I know obviously you're doing it back but if you're going if you're doing the school run anyway um, and it's not an extra bother like is could you rearrange your life basically to give yourself space to do nothing it's really important that the space is like that's by the way my elbow is making a sound I'm gonna stop because that sounds like something else it's really important to give yourself space and permission to do nothing and nothing might be laying in bed watching a film sitting on the sofa watching a film it might be going for a walk i know these things aren't nothing but the things that you wouldn't normally do it might be having a bath during the daytime it might even be doing something that you really enjoy and that's my next point once you have protected space of nothing you can either do nothing like rest and remind yourself rest is productive it's like plugging your phone into charge your phone is just resting but it is productive because it is charging or do something you enjoy I've written just here have fun actually think about what you enjoy and do that so for example I really enjoy making bracelets I don't necessarily have an end goal I don't sell them I don't have a shop I just give them to like friends and family sorry or like my children's friends and I just enjoy it it brings me joy just to sit and thread these little colorful beads on tie it up and be like woohoo I've made a bracelet maybe your joy is creating a meal from scratch like you want to go to the shop buy the ingredients chop it all up maybe it's listening to some really lovely music maybe it is going for a walk or trying something outside maybe it's seeing friends maybe you're quite social and you recharge your batteries from being with other people book in lunches or coffees or walks or go to people's houses and book in little visits with people and think of that time as like your medicine it don't feel guilty for it it's not treating yourself it's not luxury time it's not all oh, having a fun day off it is your medicine because when you're burnt out you are no good to anybody you need to get well you might not like the next one if somebody had told me this when i was feeling like super burnt out i would have uh had some choice language for them but it is get outside and exercise i really don't like exercise i'm also not a massive 
outdoors girly but I have to say when I am regularly getting outside exercise I say outside exercise like oh I'm always getting inside exercise I don't get inside exercise either so maybe if you've got a peloton or what are those walkways called treadmill uh you maybe that's good as well but when I go for long walks outside my brain does feel clearer the first few times I do it I must say I just think oh this is just really boring you know people are like oh I get the endorphins and I think so clearly I did it for a week and I was like I just not having that endorphin rush and I'm just finding this incredibly dull but once I got into it once I stuck with it I was like yes okay brain is working nicely thank you brain nice to have you back again um and also it helped me sleep a lot better when I'm burnt out even though I'm so so tired like I mean like so like pregnancy level tired I can't sleep and it's because well because you burn out <laughs> so when you do that exercise it does help you sleep a lot a lot more a small one I think it's really obvious so I don't want to make a big point out of it because I don't want to be patronizing but think about how much water you're drinking I really like water I drink a lot of water drink a lot of squash and juice and things like that um but when I'm feeling really when I'm having a burnout time I notice that I drink more Diet Coke. I think it's because I wake up feeling tired. I wake up in the morning feeling like poo diddy. I don't, I wake up feeling exhausted. And I think, oh, I'll have a Diet Coke because I don't really drink a lot of coffee. So I think I'll have a Diet Coke, that'll pet me up. And like, that's my first drink of the day is a fizzy drink. And then I get to about 11 o'clock and I'm thirsty. And I think, oh, well, it's mid morning. I want a Diet Coke. And then I, and then I get to lunchtime and basically I've just had fizzy drinks and that's, no good for you at all obviously that affects your health blah 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 so won't get really boring but basically obviously like make sure that you're drinking enough water so those things are really good things that you can do yourself at home and when i feel myself just slipping into a burnout because now i'm really good at noticing the signs i'll do those things and i can pull it back quite well um i think that i felt i was slipping into one in this sort of spring early summer and then i did those things pulled it back and now i feel really good again but in 2021 i did all those things and i still just felt terrible and i knew that i needed more support and there was two things that I did. The first thing I did was get myself some counselling, some therapy. I went every week to begin with and I just, I spent such a lot of time offloading. I didn't realise how much I was carrying around. Uh, there was just, this isn't a video to go through all the things, but there was just so much and the counsellor was really good at helping me unpick it in a really like safe way. So it didn't feel overwhelming so it didn't drive home like ah um also obviously the counselor was completely neutral and trained in the right questions to ask the right ways to like help lead my brain to like a positive conclusion um i will say in the uk council I, I think other countries too but specifically the uk um counseling is a privilege because i access that immediately because i paid for it privately you can get it on the nhs um, I know that in some places, I think most places, there is a wait time. Um, a lot of companies, or if you're in education, universities, colleges, schools, um, have access to a counsellor and so they might be able to set you up with one. So definitely worth exploring that if you are hoping for some counselling. The next thing I did was visit my GP. Didn't actually visit her, it was a phone call. Um, but it was so nice to talk to a GP who, she really validated, she really validated like how I felt. I felt so, like so silly calling her. I felt so imposter syndrome -y about calling her and saying I was struggling because I just thought, I had this thing in my mind that was like, how can I be struggling? Like, look how lovely my life is. I've got everything I ever wanted. I've got a lot, like, this is my dream house. When I bought this seven years ago, I was like, this is my dream house. I still feel like this is my dream house. I have a job that I love. I have gorgeous children. I have a partner that really loves me. I was like, how can I be struggling? I can't say this to a doctor, but because I had been speaking to my counselor and she had like, let me feel my feelings. Um, that all sounds a bit wishy-washy, doesn't it? Let me feel my feelings, but you know what I mean? I went, I well, I called, I had this appointment and the GP was like, yeah, it sounds like X, Y, Z. I'm gonna prescribe you X, Y, Z. And it massively helped. Um, I can't suggest to you what medication you need, but I would suggest if you're doing all the other things 
and you still feel like you need a little bit more of a push just to get you over that finish line to wellness call the GP because that's where I was I felt like I was so close and I felt like I had been working for a year on all the things and I still just couldn't quite get there and then when I saw my GP um, and I had some actual medication it got me there and I was like great it wasn't something that I had long term although if I needed something long term now I wouldn't have that like reluctance I'd be like great if this is what if this is what makes me well and makes me a happy healthy functioning member of my family and community and society and the world then great I have a really bad habit of when I'm ill I push through so if if my arm aches, I'm like, it'll be fine tomorrow. I'm just gonna carry on and push through. If I've got a cold, I take a few Lemsips, take a few whatever, max strength, Beecham's, yada yada, blow my nose and push through. If I've got a headache, couple of paracetamols, push through. If I'm having a down day, I push through. Like, I'm such a push througher and it's really hard to push through burnout. I don't know if it's impossible, but it's definitely impossible for me. Don't ignore burnout. You almost have to respect it and be like, whoa, this is my body's way of saying stop because once I had all the like mental symptoms of burnout I started to have those physical ones like stomach issues and fatigue and headaches etc and I don't know what would have happened if I'd have carried on just pushing through um, but I don't think it would have been positive so if you are feeling that way whether you're like right in the trenches or you're just starting to feel it address it as quickly as you possibly can um, for best results <laughs> sound like the back of a packet or something but what I'm saying is don't ignore it if you have any really good tips or things that have helped you please feel free to put them in the comments because that can then become like quite a handy resource for people I think that's probably all from me I will leave it there thank you so much for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it if you haven't already subscribed please do please give the video a thumbs up and leave a friendly comment all right thanks for watching bye